Father, thank you so very much for these opportunities, knowing full well that perhaps in time future that we're not going to have these opportunities that we have uh, at exactly at this heartbeat. So, Father, we do not take this for granted. No, not one bit. And, Father, you've told us in your holy word to redeem the times because the days are evil, the wicked. And, Father, we're going to prove that uh, a little bit uh, on in the Sunday school hour this morning. And, my Father, uh, it's exactly, exactly what you said that, that it would be, and it is. Basically, the just reality is proving your holy word. Again, my Father, we ask you again now, as we prayed many, many times, that you bind Satan, that you build a hedge of protection around these precious saints of God, and that you rebuke and chase away Satan in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Master, Savior, King, and Redeemer. Father, I pray uh, lastly for this individual. My Father, again, I know who I am. And my Father, I can do all the study, prep, and praying that, that is possible. But my Father, unless you breathe on this speaker, it is all for naught. So my Father, I need you this morning. We do pray that there, there's some uh, uh, precious, precious since illness has really, has really uh, hurt, uh, hurt this assembly here, these, these precious believers, uh, Bro Brother Robert Weichel, Lord, we love that dear saint of God. And Father, would you continue to be with him, Heavenly Father, for his dear wife, Miss Brenda. Lord, uh, help her, Heavenly Father, because we know, we know that when the husband goes through something, the wife goes through it too, and vice versa. Uh, there's others that spontaneously come to my heart. Father, the Watkinses. Uh, Father, we do pray for Brother Dave, we, uh, Father, uh, Brittany, and especially is so concerning, Father, they got four little ones. And Lord, they're so important. Two saved, two need to be. But Lord, we ask you that somehow, somewhat, you get them in here, Heavenly Father, that you're, so to speak, to part the Red Sea, that they can walk on dry, dry, uh, dry ground getting here. Because Lord, uh, every saint of God, Heavenly Father, we need to feed the spiritual man. And then, Heavenly Father, there no doubt there's others. Uh, we pray for Tanner. Now, Lord, he's, he's a, a, a freshman Christian, so to speak. We love him. And Heavenly Father, uh, we praise thy holy name. He's now working second shift on a job, and, and, and we rejoice. We rejoice he's working. But Heavenly Father, we ask you, because uh, I know personally, uh, especially working those hours, what it can do to a human being. So, Father, we ask that you be with Brother Tanner, uh, with Raven, and then they have a little one. <clears throat> and then, my Father, uh, we pray for our beloved pastor, for his honey bun. Heavenly Father, both of them are down. And, uh, Heavenly Father, uh, I don't know if they made it in or not, but uh, Sam and Corey and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Miss Sam, she's expecting. And, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with that dear family. We pray, uh, Heavenly Father, for uh, Brother Dev and Miss Kristen. I believe they're going to the state of Iowa. Lord, uh, bless them. Uh, bless all of our people. Uh, Thanksgiving here, uh, uh, the weekend. And Lord, we just ask that uh, our people, uh, those that are on the highway, Lord, bless them with traveling mercies and bring them back to us safely because each and every single one is so very, very important. Uh, Brother Jeff Myers, Lord, he's another, we, we, uh, we indeed, we pray for him. And uh, Tiffany and others, uh, again, we realize uh, the Thanksgiving holidays, but Lord, when, uh, when part of the body is not here, indeed, Father, we, we automatically, spontaneously, we miss them because, my Father, they are a dire part of us, of the Solid Rock Baptist Church family. Now, my Father, we ask Thee that as we have the privilege and the pleasure of open up, opening up Your Holy Word, the King James Version, Holy Bible, be with us now. Speak to our hearts. We turn this Sunday school class over to Thee, for it's in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Master, Savior, King, and Redeemer, we pray 
praise thee and thank thee. Amen. Okay, if you would, beloved, go to the book of Acts, chapter 20. Now, we're going to use this as a springboard. Had this the, uh, the other day. <clears throat> and and the, the Holy Word of God, as you're going there, the book of Acts, chapter 20, uh, 25, 26, 27, 28. And we'll hit that, and then we'll move on. But you'll find, as, especially as you do some spiritual gold mining uh, on your own, you find out that you find a little gold nugget here and then another one here and there and so on. And before you, you know, you hit the gold vein and it is so precious. And it is so easy, so easy. We say, well, I'm going to spend five minutes doing my devotions today. And you might, you, you might say that, but you begin and before you, uh, before you know it, long behold, it, quote, tastes so good that you don't want to, you, you just do not want to stop. You want to keep spiritually gold mining. And, and beloved, it, you can spend uh, an individual, and, and I know it, it, it's, you're going to say, well, I don't have time for that, or it's too time consuming, but I guarantee you 100%. You start out here, and you go through God's holy word, okay, and you end here, beloved, you, you, can, you, you know there is a cleansing going on in your hearts, 100%. And beloved, I, I tell you truly, there's no amount of money in the world, okay, that can pay for that. It's all of our great God. But, but here's, here's the catch. You got to put in the time. And, and the devil knows that. And what he's going to, to throw at you and me, uh, he'll make us too tired, or we got to work, or we got to do this, or we got to do that, or the, the youngins, everything and anything, okay? But it is so important as individuals, as God's children, let God be God. Amen. Come on. Okay? Because you, <coughs> you hear these folks and say, oh, God hates me. God doesn't love me. And we're, well, okay, okay. Have you done a little reading? Have you begun to search out as to why you, or that said individual who said that, why they said that? And chances are good to excellent. The answer is no. They manifest up their own opinions, and it's a far cry. It's way off tangent from what our great God says in his holy word, the King James Version Holy Bible. All right, let's go now again to the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 25. And uh, we'll, we'll use this, and we'll, we'll, we'll move forward, Lord willing. All right. Again, uh, to introduce to you uh, these verses, it is critical, it is critical, C-R-I-T-I-C-A-L, critical in these last days, okay, uh, my, my, my dear brethren, so important, okay, watch out, and we're not, we're not aiming at our past and nothing, nothing of, of that sort, but godly leadership and it is so critical, okay, and you must be cautious who you get your counsel from. For example, you can be sitting beside a dear brother, okay, and I'm not, again, I'm not pointing fingers, not, I'm, I'm telling you this to edify you in the Lord, okay? And you say, well, I can ask brother and so-and-so, or I can ask sister so-and-so about, whatever it is that you're going through, have gone through, are going through, or will go through. And, and you say, well, they look good, so, I, so I'll, I'll ask them. Well, the truth of the matter is, they may not be, okay, in perfect harmony walking with the Lord. You say, what do you mean? Oh, there'll be have mankind, John Q. Public. Beloved, you ask them a question, you ask them to give 
you their opinions, oh, you'll be there all day <laughs> because they love to give their opinions. Okay, now, here's the acid test. Match it up with God's holy word, the King James Version Holy Bible. Because, beloved, if it is antagonistic to this beautiful book, beloved, it's wrong. And uh, I got plenty of paperwork here this morning, if, 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 if we get to it. Beloved, people, folks, do not like the word of God. They don't, they don't like it. And uh, let me tell you this. Uh, and this is right here in the Bow Fountain area. Okay, um, and I praise God for my sister, Miss Marjorie. Uh, when we got on, on visit, as you as you as you go out on visitation, you know, uh, maybe uh, two, uh, one, two days a week, maybe even more, and you 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 kind of develop, okay, a visitation. Uh, uh, you sharpen up your skills. You have pamphlets. So, and uh, Miss Marjorie and I praise God for her. She sponsors. Uh, she buys these King James Version Holy Bibles. And uh, they're ad only adult, well, a little bit more now because, because of inflation. But uh, we, we have the black ones for the men and the white ones for the ladies. And almost, again, 100% of the time, when, when we knock, and now if nobody's there, it, it, it changes if they're not home. But if they are home, what we do, and if we, we give them the pamphlet, you know, uh, Solid Rock, Baptist, John, John and Romans, so forth. And uh, <clears throat> the upshot is, is that uh, as we talk, then we say, well, we'd like to hand you a copy of God's Holy Word. And, uh, and uh, we'll give the white one to the, to the wife, the uh, black one to the man. And every time, uh, watch the expressions on their face. Okay, don't, you don't have to be a, a, a commentator, okay, when you're, when you're at the door. Uh, but the Lord, our great God, will give you discernment yes. real quick. I mean, like in a heartbeat of, of time. And there have been for the last, uh, when was it, Tuesday, Wednesday? I can't remember. Wednesday, yeah, I think it was. And... Uh, 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 a new move-in family that, that moved in. In fact, they weren't even on the list. We met them uh, when Frank Smith passed away. And uh, so we uh, got their mail, and so we were going to West Liberty to give them the mail. And uh, when we gave them these Bibles, boy, their, eye, their eyes, wow, you know. And also we asked, too, you know, you know and uh, uh, periodically, you know, we'll be uh, seeing some folk, and he says, you know, have you lived here long? Someone said, yeah, you know, we live, lived here X number of years. <coughs> and so we, we asked them, how many folk, you know, Baptists, have knocked on your door, given you, say, King James Version of the Holy Bible or the Word of God, and, you know, just you know, over, the, over the decades. And most of them would just shake their heads and says, none of them. And it kind of... Of course, our Lord, you know, you know where this is going to. Our Lord says, you know, the labors are few, the harvest plentiful. But it just amazes me sometimes. Now you say, well, we don't see anybody here. And we're, well, no, we don't. But the epilogue hasn't, hasn't been written yet. And uh, maybe when things fall apart, and we'll get into that a little bit later, at least we know they have God's holy word. They got the John and Romans. They have some, some direct uh, God's plan of salvation. They got it all, right? And if they're serious about it, they'll begin open and open and these, these pamphlets up, these, these uh, pamphlets that, that are given out, or the King James Version, and they'll start reading it, okay? And so it's very important. 25 then, And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, Okay, again, that's one of the acid tests. What do they, okay, the, the individuals who speak before thee, let's say you're, you're out on vacation, okay, and you go to church, a visiting church, and uh, you know, Baptist, of course, and the upshot is uh, listen to what they preach, 
Okay, does it match up with what God says in the King James Version Holy Bible? Here's another acid test. Do they even use the King James Version Holy Bible? Now, you know, beloved, again, there's certain things that kind of hurt me. And this is one. Your C, in bad, at least they have B-A-P-T-I-S-T written across there, the foliage there. And, beloved, they have drifted so far away from the King James Version Holy Bible. We went, I know, over here at uh, Calvary, okay? Call it as it is. They use the NIV. And I can vividly remember, and this is even before uh, Brother Ball Balls passed away, okay? And, oh, we, we love that dear brother even yet. And uh, there were some ladies there. And one of the Christians, just in passing, uh, do you use the King James Version Holy Holy Bible. Well, when it, when, it got, <laughs> when it was over, they immediately took up offense. Immediately. So you don't need that. Why, well, you can use any, but no, you can't. Because they're perversions. They're not the Holy Bible. The King James Version Holy Bible. Again, here's the church that's got B-A-P-T-I-S-T -B written across it. Okay, so beloved, we, we, it's critical that we do not move the landmarks. Okay, in fact, our great God says, you know, hold true to those landmarks. Don't let them go what I have taught you from the beginning. So, preaching the gospel of God. Now, no one says shall, okay, if it's a will and shall, again, very quickly, uh, pay it, and this is why it's so important to stay with the King James Version Holy Bible. Two words, will and shall. You say, oh, they're future tense, I mean the same thing. No, they, no, they do not, and they're not even spelt the same. And just very quickly, if our great God, again, so important to use the King James Version, Holy Bible, if God uses the word shall, S-H-A-L, uh, take a look, he did. He didn't use will, you shall. That means absolutism, absolute. Now, other times in the King James Version, Holy Bible, it means will. And it changes the meaning slightly on that particular verse, what our great God says. Paul says, you shall, you shall see my face no more, guaranteed. And you know what? They didn't. They didn't. And back then, of course, you know, uh, people yoked up to, to their leader, godly leaders, god, godly counsel, and so forth. And I can remember, I can touch bases with this. Me and my honey bun, I believe the last one was the Wells family. They, they were out of the state of West Virginia. They were going to uh, Brazil. Uh, São Paulo, Brazil, I, th I think is, is, is where they were going to. And back then, uh, we had the blessing of housing missionaries, getting to know the missionaries. Uh, and by the way, missionaries are human beings. They're just like you and me. They have feelings, they have needs, uh, they have desires of the Lord to fulfill for their life. Missionaries, they are our heroes of the faith. Because, beloved, they put it all on the line. They put it all on the line for Jesus. And he said, well, it's easy. No, it's not easy. Some of them, they got, they got little ones. They got little ones, okay? And you, and you mamas, you know what it is to raise a little one. Well, can you, <coughs> can you imagine what it's like to raise <coughs> a little one on the missionary field? Well, that just compounds the issues. Yes, it does. But they did, and they're doing it. And praise be to God for our heroes of the faith, our missionaries. Wherefore, okay, wherefore, find out why it's there, uh, why it's wherefore. I take you to record this day. Okay, it's on record. Don't worry about it. I am pure from the blood of all men. Very important. Very important quickly. Did you know, Christian, child of God, we are the Lord's ambassadors. I mean, beloved, it just comes with the salvation package. In these last days... That we're living, and we, I can't emphasize to you enough 
we're living in the last day. We are, we're there. T-H-E-R-E, we're there. I, I don't know how to make that more emphatic. And, beloved, for nobody to, to, to acknowledge that, they're just, blind, they're blind as a bat. That's about the spiritually blind as a bat. That's the only thing that, that I can say. But as God's children, we are his ambassadors. And probably nine chances out of ten, our great, great God is going to put you in a crowd or in some people's presence, and you are going to be the only, O-N-L-Y, I'll spell these things out to get them across to you, the only ambassador of Christ in that particular group. You're it. You're it. He says, well, I don't like that. Well, beloved, our, first of all, our great God is perfect. P-E-R-F-E-C-T. And beloved, being perfect, he, he doesn't make any mistakes. But beloved, there it's so important. Some Christians, they change like chameleons, and that's sad. They change like chameleons when it comes to money. They change like chameleons when it comes to, to, to whoever they socialize with. Okay, and the sad part about it is, well, you know, Sunday I can be Christian, uh, Friday night or uh, Saturday, Saturday night, you know, I, I can throw it off. No, no, no. We're Christian. We're, ch- we're children of God. S- uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, back in. 300, every breath and every heartbeat. You know, praise be to God that our great God is not an Indian giver. That's right. You know that? And so for what our Lord done on Mount Calvary's cross, beloved, we are put there in that particular place to witness the foe. We are a man, God's messenger, boys and girls. How's that? Okay? To let them know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I'm scared to because they're not going to like me. So what? Because, beloved, uh, let me help you this. And I am not an OT putting myself up on a soapbox. But I, I call periodically some folk that I used to work with. And uh, one, his name's Don um, Linehan. Says, Don, how you doing? Oh, Joe, he says, I'm, I'm doing fine, thank you. And, in fact, he's older than I am, which is encouraging because I'm getting up there myself. And uh, but he's about 71. And I said, uh, Don, tell me uh, how things at work, you know, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> and they said, Joe, he says, I just want to tell you something, brother. I said, okay. He says, after you left or retired, he says, I, want, I want to let you know, things just are not the same. And it, 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 it's sad on one sense, but in essence, when, when, when the Lord, of course, took me out of that arena, uh, there was nobody there that I, I knew of. In fact, all the years that I was there, I was only uh, able to, to win one for the Lord, but praise God for that. But uh, it, it's sad to say that when, when that particular individual left or you leave, they fall back as if nothing ever happened, and that's sad. But here's the key. Do you know that I am, in verse 26, I am pure from the blood of all men? There are bloods on your head unless you let them know about Jesus. Okay, it's so important because, beloved, at the judgment, this is one of those pieces of Scripture, is, and there's, there's a judgment coming for you and I, for the believers, the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, our, our Heavenly Father, beloved, He takes this, this is important, He takes this seriously. Because why? Take a look at our Savior. Look what he did on Mount Calvary. E- even before, even before that, even before he got to the cross, they, they beat our Lord to, to a pop. They did. Uh, Scourge, where, where, where he was hard, scarcely even recognizable as a human being. And, and you know, I'll, I'll save. He paid your my sin debt. We could live a hundred years and we could never ever be good enough to pay 
ourselves. Only Jesus, capital J E S S. Only what we do with Jesus is is very very critical, and that goes out for every single individual. So we are Christ and back. We let them know. But if they reject, please again, I want to say this: Do not wear your feelings on your 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 shirt sleeves. Please don't, because what's going to happen sooner or later? They're going it, to it's. Your feelings are going to get knocked off. You're going to be hurt. You're going to quit. You won't make it. Or at least you won't be doing this, is what our Lord says. And at some point, just ponder, just for a second. What if our Lord, our precious Savior, and you can better believe his, his or not only was his body at Calvary, even before that, can you imagine the hurt that he had? In fact, the shortest piece of scripture in the Holy, in the Holy Bible, the King James Version Holy Bible, Jesus Wept. He wept right, over Jerusalem. He would have gathered them, you know, as, as a brood, you know, to, 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 to the hen, you know, to protect them. And Jerusalem rejected right. our Lord. Right. And Jesus wept. He wept. But, okay, they, they got the met. Likewise, it's our job to do that, okay? Believe me, John Q. Public's not, because it's not in John Q. Public to do that. But it's up to you and me. It's so important. 26, wherefore, okay, I take you record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Okay, so we understand that. 27, for I know I have not, N-O-T, shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Very important. Um, again, uh, pastoral leaders, godly, godly leadership, and so forth. Test them as a test. What do they preach? Do they avoid this because, well, it's too touchy? Or let's say they have some, um, uh, let's just be, be blunt. Let's be blunt. Let's say they have some sodomites in the congregation. Well, because we have sodomites in the congregation today, I'm going to change my message. We're not going to preach on Romans chapter 1. Ooh, that hurts. Because Romans chapter 1 is, if, if that was the message that the pastor gave for that very day, for example, you go through with it. Okay, you do what our great God tells you to do. He said, well, their feelings are going to be hurt. Well, beloved, here's the thing. They've got to hear the truth. They've got to. And if they, if they don't hear the truth, how are they going to repent, believe, accept, okay, and be saved if they, if, 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 the truth hasn't been preached to them or, or, or taught to them, you see. And chances are, in, in, in scenarios like that, these folk only come like maybe one time just to, quote, check us out, and then they're gone. So you, you got one shot, and it's got to be our great, great God, okay, the focus on our Lord. So we go on, 28, here we go. Take heed, okay, and when our Lord says that, please pay attention, because it's going to come back at the judgment seat of Christ to you and I. Therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. All right. Now, there, if you tear this apart, not only pastors, but it's also good for you and me. It's good for you and me. Why? Right, well, we're reading it right here in the book of Acts, chapter 20, and we're now at verse 28. You've got to give attention. Well, Lord, would I give attention? Okay, pastors, definitely they have to give attention to themselves. Because why? Beloved, they are under the spotlight. I mean, they, they got to be clean, pure, and pristine because everybody's going to be watching them. Okay, so they got to be just like our Savior. Uh, let's go on. I could give an example uh, but but uh, time is going by. Now, okay, they got to pay attention to the cells. The next clause, and to all the flock. Okay, we know the pastor does that, and we, we're going to learn he's the overseer. Right? But this is good food, spiritual food, for you and me. Now, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, got to, got to, uh, hit this uh, for a little. It doesn't mean for you to be a busybody or a nosy individual. 
No, 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 no. It's like, you call, what'd you do now? What'd you do now? What'd you do? No, 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 no. But what it, you can discern. Here we go. When one of our people walk through the doors and we know them, you can tell if they've been beat up. You can tell if they're hurting. You can tell if not immediately as you, as you, as you uh, talk with them, you can begin to discern and pick some things up, okay? And beloved, may I say this? Solid Rock Baptist Church is a hospital. Oh, yes. Truly, truly. In fact, everything, the spiritual realm, mental, physical, of course, the spiritual here, social, financial, uh, psychological, you put anything down, it doesn't matter, stems from the spiritual, from the heart. If the heart is hurt, damaged, wounded, hurting, something's off, all the other parameters are going to... It's, it's, here we go. It's like, uh, it's like a V8 engine. Okay, now, they're, granted, they're heading toward V6s and, and V4s now. But let's say you got a, a truck, V8 engine in there, all right? If that, if, if that truck, okay, eight cylinders, if you got one or more cylinders burned out, you're not going to get the performance that you're supposed to get out of that V8 engine. Why? Because you, there's a couple, say you got a couple burned out valves, Beloved, you got to do some mechanical work and replace those valves so that you get the optimum performance that, that is needed to get the job done. Ditto for this. So what, one of the things we want to do, okay, we look to ourselves. We make sure that there is no log in our eye. Remember that? Okay. In fact, we don't even want to Spec, and you know, we want to be clean and pure before our heavenly Father, because it's, it's just like we, what we said before about counsel, uh, godly counsel. You try to give counsel, and people are going to look and says, "You're trying to counsel me, and look what you've done." And so we want to, we want to, we want to stay away from sin. Now we've given this before in the Sunday school class uh, in there. <clears throat> Let's pretend like <clears throat> uh, that there was a, a diamondback rattlesnake all curled up, tail rattling, about ready to strike, okay? Would you go in there? Would you go up and pet that rattlesnake? You say, that is the most dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. But if that rattlesnake represents sin and sin sin okay, bringeth pleasure for a season, would they go up and pet that? Because what happens, it'll come back and bite you. Yeah. And if it bites you, it leaves that venom in you. Yep. Now the problem's been compounded. Compounded. Oh, Mr. Rattlesnake has probably gone off, okay, so that, that uh, uh, threat immediately is gone, but now what you going to do about the venom? Well, spiritually speaking, we got to repent. We got to get that thing under the blood. B L O O D of Christ. We got to. Because if we don't, do you know if it's not under the blood of Christ that, that we'll have to pay for that at the judgment? So we want a clean, <coughs> we want a clean, clean slate. All right. <coughs> so we looked at ourselves. But also, as, as, as the flock, okay, we also look after each other. And again, this is spontaneous. For example, you might be working, I have seen this over and over and over and over again. And uh, you'd be working, maybe the ladies, you're, I don't know, while mopping the floor, or man, they'll be out, outside, whatever. Okay, and the Holy Spirit will just prompt you right then and there about a, a particular individual. 
maybe a, a brother or sister, okay, in the faith. And you'd be amazed if you stop and say, brother, I was doing this, sister, I was doing this, and you came on my heart. I just want to give you a, a, a quick telephone call or something. Make sure you're okay, making sure everything's fine. First of all, when that, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's very, very true. They need help at that instant, whatever the particular situation is. And I give you some examples of that, but we'll move on. Secondly, if there, if there isn't any instance or anything like that, here's the beauty of it. You know that that dear brother or sister has been praying for you and they're concerned enough about you to call you to see if you are okay. Now, beloved, I want to tell you something. That speaks volumes. It does. It does. Because in these last days, people are unthankful. It's just society. It's the world. People don't care about other people. It's me, 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 me. Just came out of that environment. And oh my, it, it, it gets, it, it can wear you down. It gets so sickening. But we, God's sure, we are concerned for each other. In fact, I think maybe our pastor mentioned this, but it has been mentioned. What if, and I got some paperwork there if we ever get to it today, I don't know, that do you know even as I speak right now that the current devilish, and I'm being tactful, administration that's in there right now, they are looking at our religious liberties and are attempting, at this very moment, attempting to subtract or take away our religious liberties. That's right. Oh, right now. Right now. Uh, the, uh, what was it, 503 C3 or whatever. Uh, they're, they're, they're looking at that, taken away. Well, beloved, people think, and I've heard this, you know, on visitation, well, the church gets everything free. Well, beloved, no, we don't. The church, just like you, the church has to pay for the, for the uh, utilities, uh, the electric, these lights. Okay, nice to have lights, isn't it? So we can see. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we have to pay for the heat, for the furnace. I mean, it's good. Isn't it nice and cozy in here? Well, that has a price tag to it. Or, excuse <coughs> me, what about, what about when it's hot, you know, in the summer, and we come in to a nice air-conditioned facility, okay, and it's comfortable, and we can open up God's holy word. We're not, we're not sweating like a, I don't know, a pig. <laughs> and, and so it's just, it's nice to, well, guess what? Electric, that cost money. Or how about this? Let's say uh, you're, you, you owe on uh, a church building, okay, which we do. But ever guess what? Uh, if there's a mortgage on it every month, that comes to fruition. Okay, you have to pay. Otherwise, I mean, just, just like just like us, just like us. Say, like you you uh, uh, bought a house. Well, you didn't buy. You had to get a loan on it, mortgage. Well, you every month you have to pay on that because if you don't, what will happen? You'll lose your house. And and the same thing, of course, for God's church. Well, what about this? The pastor's salary. Okay, I mean, beloved, uh, pastor can't work for free. <laughs> I mean, without without getting a job. And now I'll tell you this, and I can I can truly say this from experience and watching. Every pastor that I've seen who has to work in addition to pastor, it limits or curtails his ability to be the pastor that our great God wants him to be it's like he's working but he's got one hand tied behind his back okay he can't just do what because well, you know, chances are they some of them I know you know they're married they have as we said little ones and so forth and and you know man's got to protect his I mean uh, supply for his family 
Okay, so that's very, very important. All right, so we go on here. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you. Now, here's a word, and I love this, overseers. O-V-E-R-S-E-E-R-S. -E 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 now, I've heard the word under shepherd and so forth. It's like, let me give you a parallel. Somebody will say, the book of Revelations, well, actually, it's Revelation, okay, not Revelation. But, you know, we're not going to get the boxing gloves out and beat them up, okay? We understand what they're saying. But here, God says, overseers, okay? Or the past is the overseer. Why? And, and you know, already know this. He oversees his flock, okay? That is you and I. <coughs> and what does, he, what does he say? To feed the church of God, and that's so important, okay? Which, and by, by the way, that's with premium grade feeding. And when, when he is left, when he is able to study and, and work and give good quality feeding, spiritual feeding, beloved, everybody, the flock grows. The flock, everybody benefits from that. Okay, it says, so what does it do? He feeds the church of God, which he hath purchased. P-U-C-H-S-E. All right, with his own blood. If somebody, let's say, somebody purchased something, they own it. It is theirs. Okay? It is theirs. All right, guess what? The church of God, verse 28, which he hath, who has purchased our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, with his blood. Now, beloved, that quenches it right there. I mean, that, 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 that nails it right down. And it's so very, very important. You see, people say, well, it, it's so-and-so's church. No, it is the Lord's technically. And this comes out in verse 20. The Lord, he owns. You just said, our Lord, purchase, P-U-R-C-H-S-E, verse 20, okay, with his own blood. Now, beloved, with that, our Heavenly Father, he's not, he's, he will never overlook that. That is fact. And because of that, <clears throat> our great God, and he has a right to be, he has a perfect jealousy over his children. Because he, right here, through the blood, through the blood, okay, he owns you and he owns me. Okay, now I think my time, what I got about five years, so this is a good, good point. But I, just, I just got to this top, uh, the, the, the tip of the iceberg because I was going to dig, dig, I was hoping to dig a little bit deeper, but, you know, that's for another time. Well, let's pray. Oh, Father, heart in heaven, you have told us a ton of information from the book of Acts, chapter 20. And in these just these few verses, 25 through 28, my Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for your holy word, the King James Version, Holy Bible. Now be with us, God, us pray for Brother Tony, Heavenly Father, in the upcoming services, he bre uh, breaks the uh, bre bread of life to us. Be with us now. Keep us safe and sound from all harm and all alarms, for it's in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Master, Savior, King, and Redeemer, we pray, praise Thee, and thank Thee. Amen. Thank you, thank you, beloved, for coming. Mm -hmm.